Thank you for the introduction and hello everyone. I'm Commander Hannah Pham. I'll go over the first um, half of the presentation. After that, I'll pass it on to Lieutenant Commander Evelyn Hong to finish the rest of the presentation. Our presentation will focus on drug master files from a good foot to use of fee perspective. And the topics for today are uh, good for use of fee timeline for fiscal year 2022, the UFA, the use of fee system and payment information. And we also zoom in to take a look at how DMF and facility use of fee obligations are assessed. And lastly, we'll talk about issues that may affect um, DMF or end approvals. And before I start, I'd like to point out that our talk for today only focuses on DMF and facility fees. The other two GDUFA fee types, uh, which are applications and program fees, will not be included in this presentation. Okay, so for this slide, um, we've talked about the important GDUFA timeline for the next coming fiscal year, with the um, fiscal year 2022. Um, GDUFA fee rates for fiscal year 22 uh, will be published in an FR notice in August of 2021. The option for create, creating fiscal year 22 cover sheets in the use of fee system is activated in the, at the beginning of um, September 2021. Um, early facility payments are encouraged. Um, you may choose to submit your um, fiscal year 22 facility payments um, at this time if you wish. However, um, please note that uh, fiscal year 22 facility fees are not due until October 1st, 2021. And there are also a um, 20 days, um, 20 day grace period for facility payments. After October 21st, 2021, we'll begin to add the delinquent facility to the arrears list for fiscal year 22. And as many of you may know, facility is an annual fee, while the DMF fee is a one-time fee. And Lieutenant Commander Hong will go over the DMF fee due date in a later slide. Okay. So for this slide, uh, we go over the crossover period, which is a period of time that two fiscal year cover sheet options are available in the use of fee system. So from September 2021 to November 2021, both fiscal years um, 21 and 22 cover sheet options are available for DMF fees. However, for facility fees, it's a little bit different. Fiscal year 21 cover sheet option will be de deactivated on October 1st, 2021, which is the date that um, the um, fiscal year 22 starts. And as I mentioned earlier, um, early payment for facility fees are encouraged. Um, there will be no penalty as long as the payments are received within the um, 20 day grace um, before the 20 day grace period is over. And after that time, um, unpaid facility will be included in the publicly available risk list. Since the facility is an annual fee, once the fee is incurred, the facility will be subject to the fee um, every year after that. In order for a facility to stop incurring the fees, um, it must be withdrawn from all approved generic drug submission prior to the fee due date of the applicable fiscal year. Uh, for example, if you wish, wish to, um, if, if you like your facility to stop incurring a facility fee in fiscal year um, 22, you must remove it from all um, approved ANDAs before October 1st, 2021. And, like to, and um, I'd like to emphasize that withdrawal from all, um, all approved generic drug submission is the action required um, to stop incurring the facility fee. Uh, withdrawal from self-identification does not discharge your facility from the incurred fee. And lastly, um, if you were to assess um, to access the use of this system during the crossover period, please be extra careful and make sure that the correct fiscal year is selected before um, submitting your payment. If a wrong fiscal year is selected and paid for, uh, it's, um, sometimes it can be tricky to get the payment corrected timely. Okay, and here are information regarding GDUFA cover sheets and payment that we'd like to highlight. 
a cover sheet is required for each payment. Um, similar to other user fee programs, good of a cover sheet can be created in the user fee system. Um, before, you, before submitting your payment, once again, please review the cover sheet in its entirety to make sure it is correct. Um, for, for example, for a facility cover sheet, you may want to check if um, the correct FBI number was entered in addition to the verification of the correct um, fiscal year selection. Payment options include uh, pay.gov directly from the use of a system, a check to the U.S. Treasury Department, or a wire transfer. If you choose um, check or uh, um, wire transfer payment method, um, please make sure to reference the cover sheet, um, cover sheet PIN number on your payments. And um, uh, please do inquire your bank about um, how much a wire transfer fee will be charged um, so that you can add it on top of the fee rate to make up the total uh, payment amount. We are in year fourth of the second iteration of Kudufa, uh, but we still see payments that are short due to uncovered wire fees. Um, and please note that you do not um, need to send in hard copies of your facility fee cover sheet uh, because we can pull it from the use of the system if needed. Okay, um, as for this slide, uh, we've talked about the current transfer and refund policy. All payment transfer and, pay, um, and refund requests must be received within 180 calendar days from the payment receipt date. Um, requests must be received, I mean, requests received outside of this 180 day window will not be reviewed. And here are some items that you will need to um, include in your request. Um, the refund or transfer request form stating the justification of your request, the tax ID or DUNCE number, um, for a payment transfer request, copies of um, the old and new cover sheets should be included. Um, as of October 1st, 2000, um, 2020, we no longer able to transfer payment from a closed fiscal year to a different fiscal year cover sheet. So for example, uh, fiscal year 21 begins on October 1st, 2020 and ends on September 30th, 2021. If we were to receive a request to transfer a payment from fiscal year 21 to 22 on October 15, 2021, um, assuming that the payment was within the 180 day window, uh, we would not be able to initiate a transfer. Um, a refund may be um, issued instead. And once again, through this example, I hope that we highlight the importance of um, selecting the correct fiscal year during the crossover period. And lastly, uh, DMF payments are not refundable. Lieutenant Commander Hong will elaborate on this item at a later slide. And at this point, I'd like to pass it on to Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Hong to go over the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Commander Pham, and hello everyone. My name is Lieutenant Commander Evelyn Hong. For the remaining of the presentation, I will go over the use of fee assessment for the DMF and the facility. Follow with the common issues, especially with the mixture DMF, that may affect your DMF review. First, how facility fee are assessed. Facility fee are assessed on the due date which is the first day of the fiscal year. For fiscal year 22, it is on October 1st of 2021. Fee is incurred for any facility that is referenced in at least one approved generic drug submissions. Depending on the facility reference operation, the fee can either be active pharmaceutical ingredients, also known as API, or finished dosage form, also known as FDF facility fee. Facility with dual operations of API and FDF will only incur an FDF facility fee. There are no waivers for GDUFA. However, there are some exceptions. No fee are required for the following. For facilities that are referenced in only pen and generic drug submission, or facilities that only manufacture for pet products, 
Ford's facility only manufactured for state, federal, non-commercial products. Next is DMFV assessment. Any TAP2 API DMF that is referenced on or after October 1st of 2012 in a generic drug submission by any initial letters of authorizations shall be subject to the DMF fee. DMF is a one-time fee, which means that once the DMF fee is paid, you will not be required to pay again when the DMF is subsequently referenced in another generic drug submission. DMF fee is due on the earlier of the date on which the first generic drug submission is submitted that reference the associated DMF or when the DMF holder requests the initial completeness assessment by submitting a payment for DMF fee. This also means that for DMF that is not referenced in any generic drug submission, the payment receive date will be the DMF fee due date and therefore will determine the fiscal year fee rate for that DMF. This is also the reason why once the DMF fee payment is submitted, we will not um, refund any DMF uh, fee. Similar to facility fee, no, fee, no DMF fee are required for DMF that is used only in pet or state federal non-commercial products. On this slide, we include the GDU for definitions of API and FDF and want to especially point out the subsection C under the FDF definitions, which defines an FDF as any combinations of an API, which another component of the drug's product, for the purpose of the production of a product. Under subsection A of API definitions, an API can be a mixture if the substance is unstable or cannot be transported on its own, which leads me to the next slide, the API mixture. For API mixture, according to GDU for definition, it can be either defined as FDF or API DMF. For FDF DMF, no DMF fee are required. However, the reference API DMF are subject to the DMF fee. Also, the in-process mixture facility are subject to the FDF facility fee. While the API facility, we call it hidden because you, even though it's not referenced in the ANDA itself, it is subjects to the API facility fee still. For API DMF, in which the excipient is used for the stability purpose, the API DMF are subjects to the DMF fee and the facility are subject to the API facility fee. For a typical DMF, such as um, normal chloride, which is usually only used as an excipient, shall still be subject to the both DMF and API facility fee if it is referenced as an API in a general drug submission. Here uh, we combine the list of the helpful links including the GDU for UCP website, our email address, and other helpful resources. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening. For questions regarding the content of this presentation, please tap them into the Q&A box in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen so that we can address them during the scheduled Q&A panel after this section. If you have any questions on this presentation after the workshop is over, please send them to the email listed here by March 19, 2021 for inclusions 
in the follow-on webinar on April 9, 2021.